Today I'm gonna to detail probably the most requested repair, or at least what I seem to get the most questions on concerning an issue on both the Pinnacle and the North Point fifth wheels. And that is this really nice, really unique neon style tube light right here on the front cap. Now I've said this before in other videos, but I really do like this design detail. I think it's super unique. You know, most fifth wheels, they're just gonna have an exposed, kind of a standard LED strip here on the front cap. But on the Pinnacle and North Point, I think that they knocked it out of the park and really distinguished it by incorporating this neon tube style light. I think it looks high end. And so anyway, all that to say, as much trouble as it seems to be, you know, failing due to water intrusion, I still really like it a lot. And I think if it is installed properly, it should be issue free. So my goal in today's video is to first draw attention to what to check if you're taking delivery of a new Pinnacle or a North Point so that you can proactively check the neon style tube and make sure it is sealed properly. And that way you don't have to replace it down the road. But the other goal is to show folks like myself that have failed LEDs how I replaced mine specifically here on my Pinnacle. So with that, like I said, the first thing I wanna do is draw attention to what you need to check if you're a new Pinnacle or North Point owner. So if that's you, listen up, pay attention here, because checking this proactively, it's gonna save you the need to replace the entire LED later on. It's gonna save you a headache, essentially. All right, so when I got my Pinnacle back in the summer of 2021, you know, I never really gave much thought to how the LED light was designed on the front cap. It was really kind of off my radar to check, you know, that it was all sealed up properly. Until about six months into ownership, the LED started going kind of dim toward the center. And that's when I realized how it was constructed. It's basically just a vinyl tube with an LED strip slid inside of it. And the ends of the tube weren't sealed up. And so water eventually got into the tube. And of course it naturally settled toward the center here. And that caused the LED strip inside to be submerged in water. The water had nowhere to go. And so eventually that LED strip failed. You know, I guess it probably short circuited due to the water being a kind of a conductor of sorts. So if your light hasn't failed yet on your Pinnacle or North Point, there are two things that you're gonna to wanna to check. And first up is you wanna make sure that both ends of the tube are sealed with some kind of silicone or sealant entirely. I mean, you wanna make sure that the sealant goes into the tube, into the vinyl tube, a good half an inch or so, and it fills the entire void of both ends of the tube so that there's no possibility that water can get on the inside. And you can do that by removing these little chrome colored caps on either end here. Mine have a little square dried head. And once you remove them, you'll see what I'm talking about, how the vinyl tube needs to be sealed up on either side. All right, so that's the first thing to check. And second thing is once it's all sealed up, make sure that these chrome colored end caps are installed properly so that they overlap the ends of the neon tube and this black track that it fits into. On my unit, one of the caps was shifted to the left here such that there was about a oh, maybe an eighth inch gap, and that further allowed water into it. So in my case, I had to shift this chrome cap to the right to cover that gap properly. And the screw that it comes with, it's self-drilling. In my case, it was at least. So you can just fill the old hole first with sealant, you know, and then shift the cap as needed and use that same self-drilling screw. All right, so those are the two things to check if your light is still working. But for the rest of us, like myself, let me share the details on how to replace the LED light if yours has already failed. And I've got this all documented with pictures step by step, so I'll be referring to them throughout the video. And just to be clear, this is actually the second time that I've had to replace my LED strip inside. And this second time was entirely my fault. You know, I initially replaced it about six months ago and it worked great up until about a month ago when we were camping and we had a good bit of rain and wind. And then after the storm came through, I realized that the LED light had failed again. And I was really surprised initially as I thought I had done a really good job sealing it up, you know, initially when I replaced it. And so I thought maybe the LED strip itself was defective or maybe it overheated or something, right? Until I took it apart and I realized it was indeed entirely my fault. I actually forgot to seal one of the ends of the neon tube. And you know, it was kind of a humbling experience as I thought I did the world's best sealing job on it when I replaced it originally. And to be candid, I was a little disappointed in Jayco when it failed initially, especially when I heard about others, other owners having the same problem. 
But then after fixing it myself and then seeing it fail again, I mean, this time it was squarely on me. It was entirely my fault that it failed the second time. And you might be wondering, well, why didn't you seal it up properly when you fixed it the first time, right? Well, I thought I did. You know, it was over six months ago. And I vaguely remember that I was kind of multitasking between other matters at the time. And so I remember I was going back and forth between fixing it and tending to something else. And I also remember it was after dark. It was wintertime, you know, in the evening when I was fixing it. And uh, I suppose I must have sealed up one end of the tube and then set it down to tend to something else for a minute. And I came back and I guess I thought I had sealed both ends up. You know, it was dark out. And so then I just put the chrome caps back on and finished sealing around the caps and thought I was done. And, you know, I share all this as I'm human, just like the factory workers that assemble these units. And it's certainly possible stuff happens in the factory, kind of like it did where I got halfway into the project. I walked away, I came back, and essentially I forgot where I had left off. And that led to the neglect of sealing both sides of the tube and causing the failure a second time. So all that to say, these sorts of things happen in real life. You know, this was entirely my fault, and it just goes to show that even when you have the best intentions in mind to do your best work, you know, the best craftsmanship, you can still make a mistake and stuff like this happens. All right, well, enough rambling here. Let's go through the process of replacing the LED step by step. And of course, the first thing is going to be to make sure that the switch is powered in the off position. You know, we don't want power going to the LED while we're making the repair. Then next we're going to take off these screws that are holding the chrome color caps on both sides. It's a square drive head on mine and we'll just place them off to the side in a safe place so we don't lose them. All right, then once the caps are off both sides, we will gently pull on the vinyl tube and that's this white part. We're going to pull it out of the track here. You can kind of see there's a black track of sorts that holds the white translucent vinyl tube. And on mine, it's just a snap fit. There wasn't any glue or any screws or anything, so you just kind of gently pry it off. And you'll see that I'm starting on the left side facing the front cap, the passenger side, because the wire that powers this is attached to the right side, the driver's side. And so you'll pull the vinyl tube all the way out so that it's only attached then by the small red and black wires on the right. Next, you'll see a tiny hole in the fiberglass front cap where the red and the black wires go into. It's probably about a quarter inch hole or so. And we want to pull out the red and black wires to have more slack to attach the new LED light. Now, on mine, it almost seemed like they used some kind of butyl tape inside, you know, to seal up that hole, almost like a thick sticker. And so I had to take a tiny little screwdriver to kind of help pry back whatever that tape, that sealant on the inside was to allow me then to pull out more slack on the wires. And my guess is inside the front cap behind the, uh, the closet walls, there's probably a Wago wire nut that is connecting the LED light to the switch below. But you know, I didn't really wanna take apart my closet wall from the inside. I really just wanted to do all this from the outside. And so that's why I chose to pull more slack out on the wires. You can see I probably got about maybe three inches of wire pulled out there and you're actually seeing the shrink tubing from my first repair though, so you won't have that on yours, of course, from the factory. But basically, I pulled out that wire, I cut both the red and the black, and then I put some tape around them to keep them from getting pulled back, you know, into the, uh, the front cap. I mean, that'd be really bad if they got pulled into the front cap before the repair is completed, so definitely make sure to secure those bare wires so that you don't lose them. Now back to the vinyl tube. So you can see in my picture there what it looks like at the end of the tube where the LED strip starts with the wires. And you can see where I completely forgot to seal up the one end. And so this is probably what it's gonna look like on yours from the factory unless they've started to seal them up now. Certainly let us know if yours looks any different. But you can see that this is where the water intrusion occurs and then eventually leads to the failure of the strip inside. Now this next picture here is showing the opposite side, the left side or the passenger side, and you can see how it should be properly sealed. You can see that the silicone that I pulled out, it has completely conformed to the inside of the vinyl tube. And so that's what should have been on both sides to keep it from uh, failing this second time. Anyway, back to the repair. Next, you'll just pull out the existing LED strip, you know, kind of pull it out of the vinyl tube. It should just slide on out. And you can see when we get to the middle of the strip, the part that was along the center, the lowest part of the tube, you're probably gonna find some corrosion on the LED strip. You can see all that kind of black and brown. 
and that's where I think the water pulled up and kind of short circuited the LED strip. But we can take the full strip out and pretty much toss it in the trash. All right, next thing we're gonna do is clean off any sealant that's left over. And you may not have much from the factory on yours, but I put a good bit under the, the little uh, chrome color caps on either end. And it was kind of a secondary seal, really. And it actually held up pretty good on mine. I mean, I made it about six months or so just with that outer seal in place on the one end. But you can see I've got some silicone left over. I need to remove that first. You know, you can kind of pick at it as needed. And then I came back with some mineral spirits to do the final cleaning. You know, just make sure it's completely clean and ready for sealing later. It's just a lot easier, in my opinion, to get it all cleaned up now with the tube and everything removed compared to doing it later. Then next thing we need to do is clean the inside of the vinyl tube. And chances are, if it's like mine, you're gonna have some kind of black and brown residue that's stuck on the inside of the tube. Kind of similar to what we saw on the failed LED strip itself. And initially, when I did this the first time, I just tried running soapy water through mine, but it was so stuck on the inside that that didn't work. It still left some of that brown, kind of black residue on the inside. And so what I ended up doing was taking a small scrap of paper towel, you know, kind of wadded up, almost like a spitball, and then I used a single strand of Romex, you know, just solid copper wire, some spare wire that I had laying around. And I kind of used that to push that paper towel that was wadded up through the vinyl tube, you know, kind of force it into the middle to kind of scrub in there. And so you might be able to use a metal hanger too. You just need something that's small enough and rigid enough to push that paper towel through the tube to get it cleaned up. And you can see there in the pictures, after I went back and forth with that paper towel and the soapy water, you know, I pushed everything out and you can see just how dirty it came out. I mean, all brown and black and even the water left over in there. So I think that's all the corrosion left from the LED strip when it kind of short circuited. And so after I did that, I just kind of flushed it out real good, ran some clean water through it. And uh, you know, we just want to make sure that that vinyl tube is completely clean on the inside before we go to all the trouble of pushing the new LED strip inside of it. Otherwise we're gonna see some of that same brown and black residue from the inside and we'll have to redo it again. Then once it is completely clean, I wanted to make sure that it was nice and dry inside. And so I just took a simple air blower nozzle connected to a compressor and just kind of blew out the inside of the tube to make sure it was nice and dry. And you could probably just let it sit out for a couple hours and evaporate too. All right, now comes the fun part, stuffing the new replacement LED strip inside of the existing vinyl tube. And I'll put a link in the description below to the replacement LED strip that I use, but basically it's a high density LED strip, sometimes referred to as a COB strip, a COB strip. And basically the LEDs, the individual diodes, they're closer together. And that's what makes it appear like a neon tube light when you're all finished. Now, if you just put a regular LED strip inside here, you're gonna see the individual LED lights and it's not gonna look like a neon tube. So if you don't get the same LED strip that I used here, just make sure that you get one that's labeled as high density. And uh, on that note, I did opt to get a blue strip instead of the warm white that came from the factory, mainly as I had added some of the blue downlighting on the underside of my I-beams up front. And I did a separate install video on that. It's a really cool feature to kind of add some, some ambience to your campsite. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a card up for it. But you know, I kind of just carried that blue light theme forward here. You know, Jacob puts a blue light at the step. And so I just took that cue, did the downlighting in blue, and then did blue here again on the front cap. And in my other video on the downlighting, I showed what it all looked like at nighttime too, if you're curious. So definitely check that out if you're interested in seeing the finished product, especially at night when it's dark. But like I was saying, you can put any color you want here. You can do the same original warm white, like it comes with from the factory, it's really just your preference in the end. And again, I'll link to both the colors in the description below. So back to sliding in the LED strip into the, the vinyl tube, and this is kind of the tricky part, or at least it was for me, and that is I had a difficult time finding a replacement LED strip that was high density, but yet narrow enough to fit into this existing vinyl tube. You know, I wanted to reuse the existing vinyl tube and then the, the black track up here. I wanted to keep everything looking OEM and factory. And so 
a lot of the replacement LED cop strips out there just seemed like they were a lot wider and they wouldn't fit. And uh, so it took me a while to find this one. And the one I finally settled on, it's ever so slightly wider than the original factory LED strip. And so it is a bit of a tight squeeze getting it into the vinyl tube, but it does fit. And you know, when I did this six months ago, the first time, I remember it was a little tricky, but I don't recall it being quite as tight of a fit as it was this, this second time, the most recent time that I repaired it. I mean, I think I probably spent a good 20 to 30 minutes, you know, just kind of sliding that new LED strip into the tube. And so let me kind of share what I did to make it work. And if others are watching this and you have other ideas to chime in, certainly let us know in the comments below. But first thing I did is I put just a little bit of Dawn dish soap on the end of the tube in the strip, you know, kind of almost like a lubricant to make it go through a little bit easier. And then uh, another trick I did was to use a heat gun and kind of heat up the white vinyl tube itself. It's my understanding that vinyl expands when it's heated and so that also made it just a little bit easier to insert the new LED strip. But basically just take your time and you know use that soap and heat gun to your advantage. Now as far as which end of the LED strip, the replacement LED strip that is, to insert into the tube, it doesn't really matter. You're going to notice one end's got a DC plug attached to it, you know if you wanted to connect to an AC adapter. Whereas the other end of the replacement LED strip, it's just bare wires. And you can use either end as we're going to cut the strip to length when we're done stuffing in there at one of the designated points there. And speaking of which, when you buy the replacement LED strip, you'll actually get two uses out of it. Meaning if it fails for any reason, you can save the other end of the LED strip, the replacement strip that you cut off because you can always use that a second time the way it's got wires on both ends. But anyway, like I was saying, once the replacement strip is fully inserted into our existing vinyl tube, then you're going to look for a designated spot to cut the LED strip to length. I think it comes in about a 16 foot length or so, and we only need about four feet. And so you just look for the nearest dotted line here on the strip, and then just use a regular scissors to cut that strip to length. And really, once you've got the new LED strip inserted into the tube and cut to length, that's really the hardest part done. Now before we reconnect the wires permanently, I like to test the LED strip and a little trick that I learned from an RV tech a while back is to use a power tool battery. So if you've got any 12 volt power tools, I've got a small DeWalt drill here that uses a 12 volt battery and it's super handy as then I can quickly connect the bare wires from the LED strip to this little 12 volt battery and then instantly see if it's working right and it looks right visually. There's no you know, dim or variations in the brightness. And so that's what you're looking at right here in the picture. That gives us a chance to make sure that everything looks right and it's in working condition before we make the final connections. All right, so connecting the wires back together, you can see that I just used some tape here to temporarily hold the LED strip to the front cap while I make those connections. And then you can also see I just match up the red to the red and the black to the black. And because we've got such a small hole here in the front cap for the wires to go back through, you know, there really isn't much clearance. And so I think that soldering the wires together and then putting heat shrink tubing over them, it's going to be the best bet, you know, plus it's permanent. So you don't have to worry about it coming apart later on. Now I'm not going to show how to solder the wires actually, because there's plenty of videos on YouTube that show that. But if you've got other ideas for making these final connections here, you know, something that would work other than soldering for folks that maybe don't have a soldering iron, definitely chime in in the comments below. You can see in the first picture here, the bare wires are connected, so they're just twisted across each other together. And this, by the way, it's a good time to test the LED again just before all the connections are permanent. And so I just flip on the switch real quick and you can see we're good to go. Then the next picture you'll see that I've soldered the wires together permanently. All right, and then the next picture is the heat shrink tubing moved over to cover the joints and then shrunk onto them to make sure it's waterproof and insulated. And then I like to turn on the LED strip again here with the switch so that as I'm stuffing the wires back into the hole in the front cap, you know, and then snapping the vinyl tube, I can make sure that there's no flickering or anything abnormal. And so I like to keep the, the light lit up here. All right, so you can see in the next picture, I've carefully stuffed the excess wires back into the hole there in the front cap. And then I start snapping in the vinyl tube into the existing black track there. 
And then everything looks good. The blue LED inside, it's nice and even across the entire length of the tube. But we, of course, don't want to stop here. We need to seal it up. And again, this is where I failed in my first replacement attempt. You know, I guess I got kind of distracted and forgot. So don't make the same mistake that I made. But that being said, I just used some nice GE silicone too. It's the nice clear stuff. And I like this silicone for sealing holes in a situation like this. You know, it's got a lot of flexibility. It seems to hold up really nicely in the elements. And you can see in these next two pictures here, I've you know carefully sealed up both ends of the vinyl tube. I've made sure that it went into the tube on both ends, maybe a good half inch or so. And then I let it bulge outward a little bit, especially on the wire side to fully capture those wires so that as water runs down, none of it can get into the tube. And this time I let it dry first overnight and I came back the next day to kind of reinspect both ends of the vinyl tube before putting on the chrome color caps. And like I mentioned earlier, double check that your chrome caps are fully covering both the white vinyl tube and the black track. You know, I almost think of these chrome caps almost like a primary line of defense against water intrusion. And on mine on one side, originally the cap was pushed too far out such that there was about a eighth inch gap or so. And so this is where I remounted the cap closer to the black track to rid that gap. And so if that's the case on yours too, you can just cover the old screw hole with more silicone and then just use the existing self-drilling screw that it came with already to make the new hole. Then once the end caps are mounted, I actually took extra precaution again and I used more silicone to go around the chrome colored caps just to make sure that no water could even get past those caps themselves. And there you have it, that is the finished product. I mean, you can see how nice and even the light is. And that's really due to that high density comp strip there that's making that nice even light in conjunction with the translucent vinyl tube. And I kind of like the blue over the original warm white, but either way, I think it makes a nice statement. And it's, uh, it's a really nice feature that Jayco incorporated. Now, if I left any details out or you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop me a note in the comments below. And if you've already done this same repair on your unit and you have any additional tips to offer, definitely let us know in the comments below so we can help each other out. But if you found this video helpful, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And again, I'll put a link to the LED strip that I used in the description below. As always, thanks for watching.